We are at the Speaky Resort. Speaky Resort is a, I guess you would call it a entertainment complex. They've got a hundred meter pool here, which is kind of hard to find. And um, they've also got a convention center. Uh, if you want to work out, they have a huge gym, uh, which um, you're welcome to use as long as you pay the entrance fee, which for for foreigners, I believe is 40,000. Last time I was there was 40,000 Uganda shillings, which is about 12 or 13 US dollars. And that gives you free use of the place during the entire day. Um, now, I was here, um, I've been here a few times, but I was here in this instance, I think it was like a Tuesday or Wednesday, and there's not many people here, but come the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, the place is usually pretty full. But even though it's full, the pool is so big, it you really always have room to swim. Within Kampala itself, you also have many places with swimming pools, um, resorts. You've got this p Positive Emotion Spa, which is located in the Garden City Mall. Cost, uh, I think, 30000 to get in. They've got a gym, outdoor pool, and you can get a nice massage there as well for extra money. I don't even drink alcohol, but uh, going out at night in Kapal is always a fun time. You always meet some interesting people. Um, you, almost every night you'll see something that you've never seen before and you will never see again. Uh, let's see, for example, um, one night I was down in Kabbalagali just having a drink, playing some pool, and there was a, um, there was a, a guy about, I'd say maybe he's in his late 20s, very well dressed, looked like he had money. And um, he was sitting at a table with two like little, uh, you know, those little uh, Chromebook computers, those little uh, small little tiny laptops. And it's kind of, I, f I found that kind of odd. The guy, the guy seemed like he was a little bit off, and, you know, some, had some mental issues. Uh, and um, anyways, I took note of that. But um, a few minutes later, I looked over again and there's a little bit of commotion because he was proceeding to light cigarettes and put them in his no in his nostrils. So, for example, uh, in each nostril he would put two lit cigarettes. Then he put at least ten lit cigarettes in his mouth. Then he starts huffing and puffing and blowing a huge, <laughs> a huge, a huge uh, uh, cloud of smoke all over the place. Um, and some people were. People were kind of laughing. Some people were taking videos on their phone. Uh, anyways, this goes on for a while, and he eventually takes them out and then chugs a, probably a quarter bottle of vodka. Just sucks it down like it was water. It's absolutely incredible. No. One question that seems to come up quite often is, do you feel safe there walking by yourself? whether it's nighttime or daytime. And you know, I've walked all over, not, not all over, but I've walked in many parts of Kampala, some places that are supposedly not safe. I've done it during nighttime, daytime, and I've never, in, in since 2012, my seven trips there, I've never felt physically endangered, okay? Physically endangered, like somebody was gonna hurt me. I can't say I've heard many stories about other travelers getting robbed. I do have one story. Um, uh, I know a guy um, in Kampala, and I we used to hang out at the clubs. There's a club called Bubbles there, where a lot of foreigners go. And uh, he was telling me one day, he's a really great guy, but uh, his problem was he drank way, way, way too much. Like basically by the end of the night, by three, four in the morning, he was just like stumbling around drunk most nights. Uh, anyway, he was telling me, uh, um, that a few days before uh, he left he was really drunk and he got on the back of a, a boda and he's going a really really long way I, I don't understand I mean the guy had money I don't understand why he didn't just order an uber or something like that or even get a taxi but anyway he gets on the back of this uh, boda and about 20 minutes into the ride he realizes the driver's not going in the right direction so he starts basically f basically fighting with the guy on the on the on the boda trying to get him to stop eventually 
the guy stops and he gets off. But then what happens next is a, a few seconds later, another boat over two guys comes on, comes by, and uh, one of the guys has a knife and says, give me, give me everything you have. And I'm, again, I'm not sure, but this guy had two iPhones on him. And so he ended up losing some money in two iPhones. Kampala has many great restaurants. Due to the mild weather, you've, you've got some open air, outdoor patio type restaurants, for example, a phase two, which is located uh, not too far from where many of the main government buildings are, the tall government buildings you'll see downtown. And one of my favorites is called Afro Dine. And it's kind of, and it's kind of hard to find because it's in the Garden City Mall, but you have to go all the way down to the parking lot and, I believe you have to kind of walk through the underground parking lot to actually find the place. Um, and I don't like going to restaurants where nobody is there. In this place, um, usually you'll see a local business mid-eating lunch there or dinner there. And uh, so it's usually about half full or sometimes more than that. Uh, besides that, uh, the coffee shops in Kapala are another, another aspect of Kapala I've always liked because... They're not just coffee shops, for example. Starbucks in the West is usually just a place you get your coffee and leave. Uh, but here in Kampala, you can sit down, you can do your work, you can eat lunch, you can eat dinner, you can have a glass of wine, you can have 10 glasses of wine. And uh, for example, in that Cassia Mall, there's a ca uh, Cafe Suri, which has this uh, uh, outdoor patio, which is very, very popular. And there's places like that all over town. In downtown Kampala, there is a huge bus park, very congested, and from here you can catch a bus to almost anywhere in Uganda. Uh, I've taken buses uh, to Jinja a couple times. I was going to go to Gulu last time, which is about four hours. I think it's like four or five hours by bus heading north, but I never got the opportunity. Um, and you can uh, also go head west, uh, for example, um, uh, I'm interested in a place called Fort Portal, which I've heard some good things about. I really can't describe it because I've never been there, but I've heard it's kind of like an interesting place uh, to spend a few days. And I believe that's in the uh, northwest area of the country. Uh, heading uh, on, the way, on the way to Kigali, uh, heading west, Kigali, Rwanda, uh, we stopped in Embarara. I always have trouble pronouncing this. I think it's called Mambarara. And uh, that's kind of a, a major city and a pr pretty fun place from what I heard. Uh, but again, I've never stayed there for more. Than, we, we, we just stopped on the bus for a pit stop for about, a, for about an hour. So I don't really know much about it, but uh, I may be interested in checking that place out too. Another place to consider if you want to get out of town for a few days would be in Tebi. And uh, that's where the airport is located. So... Um, it's conceivable you may want to stay there for a couple days when you get into Uganda or a couple days before you leave. I think it's, uh, it's common for people to go there for a couple days before they uh, head out of Uganda. And what do we, what do we have in Entebbe? Uh, we've got a couple of pretty modern malls. I think a lot of uh, foreigners live there. Um, and so you've got a couple malls, a couple pretty popular nightclubs. Uh, and the greatest part is it's located on the shores of Lake Victoria. And so you've got, uh, I guess you call them little beach resorts lining the, the coast of the, or the uh, shores of the, be of the uh, lake. And uh, I remember going to one about a year or so ago called Lido Beach Resort. And it's a fun, it was a fun place. You go there, you, you know, uh, the, beaches, the beaches are not world class, obviously, but they were better than I expected, really. And um, you can eat at the restaurant there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
Uh, now, if you want to get out of the country, you can also take a bus. I once took a bus from Kampala to Riga uh, to Gigali, and it was an overnight bus, and it was just it was a rough trip. I I couldn't sleep. They were playing music on the bus all night. Uh, I don't know if I, I seriously doubt I would do that again. Um, and uh, I believe they also have buses to Nairobi, which are also again very long, tough rides. I don't know if you want to waste a day of your of your trip sitting on a bus. So, as I said, I don't think I would do it again.